Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, iPod King Carter here. I'm a little heated right now, so what I'm going to do is we're going to react to this video real quick, and I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion about Stephen A. Smith, ESPN, first take the whole nine, bruh, and my sixes, man, in general as a whole, as a fan. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot that's been going on. Somebody tweeted me this video. The video happened to be on YouTube, so you know I had to drop this reaction real quick, man. I don't live nothing down, man. As a Sixers fan, I take the good with the bad, bro. So let's go ahead and hop right into this reaction, dog. Let's get it. You know, as I sit here thinking about this subject, thinking about what irritates me most, some would believe that it's Phil Jackson and the New York Knicks considering his flagrant ineptitude as president of basketball operations in the Mecca. But there's something else that grates my nerves more so than most other things today. And that is trust the process. That noise reverberating everywhere in the city of brotherly love, that would be Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Because they're talking about the 76ers and how the 76ers have upgraded, that they're better this year than they were in years past. So that justifies them throwing seasons at a time over a three-year period. I remember when Michael Carter Williams was Rookie of the Year and they traded him. I remember former executive Sam Hinkie's refusal, probably at the behest of ownership, to even bring somebody of championship quality on a roster. I remember year after year after year spending three seasons when they won 19, 18, and 10 games over that period where the Philadelphia 76ers were losing seasons on purpose while still charging fans to come and watch them. And now First of all, let me let me go ahead and halt that right there. So he's he's basically saying that you know tanking is what grinds his his gears. Not trust the process. Trusting the process is something that every team that has been going through bad has to deal with. Like take it for for instance, the Knicks. Right, you've been having to trust their process as a Knicks fan for the last what seven eight years, right? You know what I'm saying? As soon as, you know, people got mellow, they had Amari, they was like, yo, you know what, we're about to be good. Then things started looking bad. People started getting traded. People started getting released, going to free agency, all that jazz. But as a Sixers fan, we haven't had anything. Why would we sign on a superstar knowing we don't have the backing to even sign a superstar? What superstar would want to come here if we don't have pieces around them? It's like playing chess. You wouldn't want to be the king. If you don't got a couple rooks, a couple pawns, you know what I'm saying? Like, you need that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no queens on the board, but I mean, you know, <laughs> a little sixes dancer, you never know. But what I'm saying to you guys is, how do you guys feel about this? Do you feel like the Sixers tanked year after year? Or do you honestly think, you know, seeing how everything has transpired, does the Sixers have a reason for what they did? Because to me, Michael Carter Williams was the rookie of the year. The draft wasn't that crazy. I'm going to be totally honest. The draft that year wasn't that crazy. You know what I'm saying? Michael Carter Williams, crazy shoulder injury. Couldn't really shoot a jump shot. We gave him up. We said, hey, you got to go. What has he done lately? Like a lot of people, you act like he went somewhere and started averaging 20 and 10. He didn't. Did we come out on top? Uh, maybe. But all in all, I mean, it was a good move because we had to get the right pieces to make a team around somebody that we could trust for the long haul. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's go ahead and, and keep it going because, you know, it's, it's more he's going to talk about. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to just go ahead and, you know, listen and not talk. So let's do this, man. Now, all of a sudden, because they're respectable. By the way, one thing I don't respect, ESPN, first take, whatever, why y'all got to show all the bad clips? From the Sixers. Show some of the good. I see a lot of the good on social media. I see a lot of, you know, NBA.com. I see e even ESPN, even especially Ball is Life, putting clips up there of the Sixers actually doing good. So don't sit up here and just put up all the bad clips and make it seem like we're exactly the same team as last year. Don't do that. Don't disrespect us like that. You know what I'm saying? From the rip. See an upside with Joel and B, assuming he can be healthy. We see Ben Simmons, assuming he can be healthy, and we fantasize about what they're going to be. 
Well, keep in mind, Joel and Bede missed two seasons. Ben Simmons missed this season. New Orleans Noel missed the full season. And Michael Carter Williams is the rookie of the year. And you moved him. Losing seasons on purpose. Being inept on purpose. While charging fans to watch you. First of all, why you mad? Why are you mad? Like, let, let's think about it. You keep going back to moving Michael Carter Williams. What else can you possibly say? And Bede was out for two seasons with an injury. People said he was the next one, the next big man on the list to be one of the great bigs. He sat for two seasons for injury. Ben Simmons, injured. You act like Ben Simmons is out there on the floor with Embiid playing the same time of minutes, and they still losing. Embiid is out for the season right now. He's out for the season. We have a whole half of a season left. He's gone already. Like, you sitting up here thinking that we're tanking on purpose. No. These are the circumstances that happen. We got Ilya Sova. You know what I'm saying? Ended up moving him, but, you know what I'm saying? We got a couple wins out of him, a couple 20-point games out of him. You know what I'm saying? We still got TJ. We still got Rodriguez. We haven't moved anybody else. Jared Bayless, I would say that pickup was trash because this man is still injury prone. Still on IR, like... What, what what do you expect? Dario Dario is finally getting some shine because Embiid and him ain't out there right now. And, oh, let's talk about Jalil. Bruh, what, what can we say? We was talking all season about moving this guy. And we decided, you know what, we're going to move Noel and keep Jalil. Maybe it's because nobody wanted to pick him up. Or maybe we realized we needed him. Or another circumstance. You act like we shipped off both of those bigs and said, nah, we're going to tank again. That wasn't in the plans. That wasn't in the cards. When the cards fall and you you pick your hand up, you got to do what you got to do with it. It's that simple. It's despicable. So it's nice to see that. Yo, I cannot. Despicable, though, fam. That's what we doing? This, you calling it despicable, though? The 76ers are not trying to win games. And they've got basketball people making basketball decisions. But do me a favor. Take that trust the process lingo. And go to hell with it. Because oh. I don't want to hear it anymore. It makes me sick. Almost as much as the Cowboy fans do. You hear this shit? I think the reason why Stephen A. Smith does what he does is simply to get people talking. He, he pulls this I'm the bad guy stunt on camera. Looking at a teleprompter, mind you, might I add, you know what I'm saying? Reading off a, a list of something for people to say or something. Somebody probably wrote that. He probably didn't even write it. He probably didn't even write it. He probably went over it and over and over it so he can say it, get it right, you know, get his, his words across, you know what I'm saying, when he say his, his big words. But other than that, I don't think he really feels that way. Let's be honest. Let's be honest, Stephen A. You haven't blinked. Since you started this goddamn video, like, we're at 157 out of 2 minutes and 17 seconds and you haven't blinked once, sir. You're reading off a teleprompter, sir. Like, just saying. And that's that. Finally. That is over. But what I have to say about that, guys, the, sim the simple thing is that as a Sixers fan, when I say we take the good with the bad, our last great season was the last time we went to the playoffs you know what i'm saying with andre iguodala andre iguodala got shipped over to golden state won a ring happy for him but ever since then we've been trying to put the team back together you guys have to realize in 1996 we rolled off of a superstar pick a superstar pick a player that will be remembered forever a hall of famer we rode his coattails until we couldn't ride him no more that's what we did. Allen Iverson was a gem. It was something that you really n might not see too many more times in, the, in your lifetime. And we rode his coattails. After AI left, we tried to put the team together, tried to put pieces around Andre Iguodala, which wasn't what the right move because, in all essence, Andre Iguodala isn't a superstar. He's a great role player, a great defensive player, a great guy with... A great sense for where the ball is on offense and defense. I'm not saying he's a scoring machine or he's a, a sharp shooting dead eye, none of that. No, he just has a good sense of where the ball is. He can lock up 
and he can get a couple buckets. We tried to put some pieces around him. It didn't work. So we we imploded. We said, now nah, you know what? We're going to start all over. Drew Holiday, injury prone. We shipped him. He didn't say nothing about that, though. He didn't say nothing about shipping Drew Holiday because shipping Drew Holiday was a good move because he was very, very injury prone. So was Michael. Everybody that we've traded away, guard-wise, they do the most. Guards do the most. So why would you want to have an injury-prone guard on your team running the show? It doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? You seen what happened to D. Rose? They say, look, bro, we, you know what I'm saying? We're going to have to get you up out of here, man. You know what I'm saying? You, you're very injury-prone. You're sitting a lot. We got to get you up out of here. Some teams just make that decision. And as a Sixers fan, you can see why the Sixers make the decisions that they make because they realize their timetable just doesn't fit some of these guys. Sometimes you just got to say, you know what? We got to move this piece and we got to make it do what it do. You know what I'm saying? We just acquired a couple new pieces, you know what I'm saying, from the last trade deadline and a couple new picks and stuff like that. I know they got um, one team got a protected uh, like 18th picker and lower and all that, but it's all good, man. We got a couple second rounders and all that. We're going to make it do what it do. This next draft coming up is where the guards come out. And I need the Sixers to draft maybe about three guards. And maybe a wingman. Draft about three guards and a wingman, or possibly whatever you can within that, you know, timetable of the draft, and see what you could do with them guys. And then other people who draft other guards, maybe you might see some potential in them if they don't get signed. You know what I'm saying? Me, I see the real. You really do have to trust the process. But he just mad Stephen A that we tagged it. You know what I'm saying? He just mad that it's our motto. You know what I'm saying? I, I bet you if LeBron and them said, trust the process throughout everything that they've been doing, acquiring new pieces, you know what I'm saying, trying to get a championship squad because they already have, what, three stars on their team? But if they put trust the process on their tagline, what then? You you, you going to be mad at LeBron? No. You going to be, trust the process. Trust the process. Trust the pro. Come on, man. Be real with yourself, Stephen A. Clown. Mike Wilmer.